Welcome back. We'll start with the seventh chapter of Class Six Science. In this chapter, we will talk about getting to know more on plants. Before we start to focus on plants, let's understand a kind of hierarchy or a kind of network in which we understand plants. So, plants and animals both are part of the living organisms or the living system. And this living organisms we call them as the biotic world. On the other hand, you have non-living organisms. And the non-living things are known as abiotic. Now, this plants and animals which constitute the living organisms have their dependence on the non-living things. For example, soil, water, air, uh, temperature, rainfall. So, all these non-living parameters affect the existence of the living organisms that are present. The second important thing that we need to understand is in, within the living organisms, be it the plants, be it the animals, you have a kind of variety that is present. Now, we can also find variety within variety. So, when I say variety, we can say there are numerous types of plants that are present, there are numerous types of animals that are present. But when I say variety within variety, I say within the flowers, let's say you have n number of flowers that we have today here. And all these flowers have a kind of small differences that can be seen. And therefore, we try to understand those flowers differently. Now, <coughs> Understanding these characteristics, we talk about the two components, <coughs> the living and the non-living. And then we talk ad about how these organisms adopt to the surroundings. So be it the terrestrial organisms or the aquatic organisms, each one have their different characteristics. We'll talk about more on this in the ninth chapter where we'll focus exclusively on the various adaptations that we would understand. So that is, uh, we would be covering in the ninth chapter. So we have just brought a summary here to help you better understand the varieties that exist within an organism. Now, the next thing that we would focus on is the morphology. Morphology is a very, very important term. And under morphology, we try to understand only the external characteristics. So when we talk about only the external characteristics, we say we understand the morphology. So we understand the morphology of animals as well as plants. Today we would be talking only about plants. Now when we talk about morphology, we look on the structure, we look on the shape, we look on the texture. So those are some of the primary things or uh, within the flowers, let's say, or the leaves, we look on the arrangement. Let's say in this flower, I can see each of the petal is separate. However, in this flower, all the petals are united. So the arrangement of the world is different in both the flowers. And there, therefore, we understand arrangement as one of the major characteristics. Within plants, when we talk about, we focus on two major parts. The first is the vegetative part and the next is the reproductive part. Under the vegetative part, we consider three important parts, root, stem and leaf. So let's understand these one by one. I have a plant here and this plant has the roots. Now these roots have two important functions. The first function is to anchor to the soil. So this plant is firmly established in the ground because of the root system. The second important function is to take up the water and the nutrients to the flowers, sorry, to the leaves where the food production would be done. So the two important functions of the root are anchoring to the soil and taking the water and nutrients to the leaves. Now these roots are of two types. First is the tap root system and second is the fibrous root system. So we have both the examples here. You have the first plant where you have a kind of tap root system and you can see only the leaves that are present here or the root that is present here and small lateral lines that are seen. On the other hand, let's say I have a grass here and the leaves of this grass, or oh sorry, the roots of this grass are widespread and therefore I say these roots are kind of fibrous roots. So these two rooting patterns are different for both and therefore we understand the two types of root system. Those are the tap root system and the fibrous root system. The next important thing that we try to understand is 
the classification of the trees now when we talk about classification of the trees you might have read this in your junior classes so you have herbs which are very small plants for example grasses bigger than herbs you have shrubs for example rose plant if you look, look into your garden nearby that is a shrub and this rose plant would have soft stem the stem won't be so thick but it would be definitely hard the next is the trees the big trees that you can see the people trees the mango trees around you so those would be the example of trees and trees usually have hard and thick stems then you have two important further classification climbers and creepers so as the name suggests climb so it goes up so for example money plant peas all these have very thin stems which need support and they climb up on the other hand you have creepers which is spread on the ground for example pumpkin so that is a classic example of climber and creeper coming on to the next important thing is weeds weeds are unwanted plants that are present besides the main or the existing plant the next important thing that we would focus on are the three vegetative parts that we have talked about so we already covered what are roots next is stem under the stem we would understand that the main function of the stem is to first to transport the water and the nutrient to the leaves and once the leaf processes the food that food would be pre, uh, spread or distributed to the whole of the plant and therefore there are two important functions that stem has one is to transfer water and nutrients to the leaves the other is to transfer the food particles back to the uh, different parts of the plant now there are two vessels that are useful for this those are known as xylem and phloem which we would be understanding in more detail in our higher classes for now if you take any leaf for example i have a money plant leaf here and what you do is you look closely onto the center of the leaf and you would see small vessels that are running and these small vessels which you see are known as xylem and phloem these xylem and phloem conduct water and food so xylem is used to conduct the water and the nutrients on the other hand phloem conducts the processed food to the different parts of the plant so those are the function of xylem and phloem and then you have certain plants where you have stems that we eat for example sugarcane celery so all these are the stems that we eat the next important case study is here what i have done is we have a flower with a stem we take a kind of section of the stem and dip the two stems into different pots one with red color and other with blue color over few hours we would see that this water moves up from the stem to the flower and you would see half of the flower on the side of red would turn red on the side of blue would turn blue and this shows the presence of xylem within the stems and the conduction of water that takes place through the stem the next is leaf leaf is again a very interesting feature because leaf is the main unit where you have food production that takes place coming on to a kind of summary of food production what happens or how food actually is produced so leaf has a green pigment which is known as chlorophyll now this green pigment which is known as chlorophyll in presence of sunlight you have food that is produced and this food that is produced along with the food what is released is oxygen and during the production of food what is required is carbon dioxide and once this food or starch is produced in the leaf i can say if i take that leaf put it in a solution of spirit and boil it the liquid would turn green and if i put or pour few drops of iodine it would turn blue black as we talked about in the first chapter where we did the test on carbohydrates and similarly it proves that these leaves which are green in color have starch in them because the food is produced if the same leaf was in dark there would be no food that would be produced and even after putting in iodine solution the color won't change blue black so that's one of the interesting testings the next is understanding the leaf 
So if I have a leaf here, the whole of the leaf base, I say it is known as lamina. And within the lamina, you have the midrib that is present through which you have the main rib that takes uh, covers and then you have the veins that run through and those are known as the venation. Now in this leaf you can see a classic example of parallel venation. As you can see closely you would have lines that run parallel to one another and they do not meet. So that kind of veins are known, known as parallel venation. On the other hand in many of the leaves normally if you go onto the garden you would find reticulate venation where the venation would not be parallel and the lines or the veins would run in any direction. So those are the two types of veins that are seen. Veins are running all over the lamina and the part where it is attached to the stem is known as the petiole. So this section, the lowermost section is known as petiole or the stalk. So these are the basic characteristics under leaf and we have a diagram of leaf that further explains it and this diagram shows a reticulate venation. On the other hand, what we have here is a parallel venation. The next important example, uh, our understanding of reticulate and parallel venation, you have one very interesting study. Mostly the parallel venations are seen only in monocots. What are monocots and dicots? When we say let's take any example of a pulse, let's take P as an example. When we open the upper layer of the P, you would have the P particle that would the seed that would break into two and therefore we say it's dicot. Monocot has just one single formation that would be seen and parallel venation is usually common in monocots. Common example are wheat, grass, banana and coconut. Reticulate venation on the other hand is seen in people, rose and other trees. Uh, another very interesting study is I have a experiment here. What I have done is I have put polythene on two of the branches. One has leaves on it, the other does not have leaves on it. Now what is the difference in the two? The one that has leaves would have small droplets of water on its surrounding that would be seen and that is because of the process of transpiration. Now when we talk about process of transpiration, it is very different from the process of photosynthesis that involves production of the food. Under transpiration, what happens is the plant basically is respiring or taking in oxygen for its survival. And under that particle or that process, you have water droplets that are released into the atmosphere. And therefore, you have <coughs> the water droplets only on the twig where you have leaves. The one that does not have leaves will have no transpiration that would be seen. So that's another important finding. A good example is when you are sleeping beneath a tree, what happens? In the night, we recommend you should not sleep with the, under a tree. In the day, in presence of sunlight, a tree manufactures uh, or does the process of photosynthesis. A byproduct is oxygen, which is good for human beings and which we inhale for our survival. But during the night time, what happens is only process that takes place in the plants is respiration, which requires oxygen and releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Since carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere, that's not good for our intake and therefore it's recommended not to sleep under trees during night time. So that's again a kind of common uh, practical example that we can help understand this concept. Some of the leaves that we commonly eat are lettuce, spinach, now roots we have already talked about. So the next thing that we would talk about is the reproductive part. Under the reproductive part, as we said, we have three things, flowers, these flowers convert into fruit and these fruits further have seeds. So all these three are considered under the reproductive part and root system and leaf are considered as the vegetative part. Now coming on to the first that is flower which is most important. Now we would have a kind of complete flower that we have here that we would help today in our demonstration that would help us today in our demonstration. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand the various parts of the flower. Now as you can see the bright red colors here show the petals. These petals are also known as corolla. 
Towards the lower side, you have green lines that form this plant or this form the attachment to this flower and these green part is known as sepal. Now this sepal is also known as calyx. The next important part is the vegetative part, uh, sorry, the reproductive part. So under the reproductive part, you have two important parts. Those are known as the male reproductive parts and the female reproductive parts. So you have the anther and the filament. As you can see in this flower, you have the anther that's on the top and the long line that is seen as the filament that is seen. We have another flower that demonstrates this for further better. So you have a very clear picture of the anther that is seen with blue here, uh, yellow here and then you have the green pigment, uh, the filament that is seen. The next is this flower which we said is a complete flower. So you have the small yellow dots that are seen surrounding to it are the anthers and attached to it the lines that you can see are the filaments. Then the center part. On the top you have the stigma. The whole body is known as a style and towards the end in the center you would have the ovary. This ovary would further have ovules. Now this is the basic structure of the plant, flower that we try to understand. So we have already worked around the major terms. The petals or the corollas, those could be conjoint or separate. So these are an example of joint ones. Now these flowers can vary in various size. So I have a very small flower here and a bigger flower here. So those are the various things that we try to understand. And then you have the pistils which con consist of the stigma on the top as you can see here that's the stigma and then you have the style and towards the center you would have the ovary which has the ovules now from the ovary you can take two sections which are known as the longitudinal section and the transverse section so what happens if you take a lemon and you try to cut the lemon into two halves one is this and one is this in one you would see the arrangement of seeds in this manner and this is known as a transverse section on the other hand, you would have a longitudinal section which is vertical and you would have the arrangement of seeds that would be seen in this fashion. And that is the arrangement of ovules that are present within the ovary. So that's again a very very important part to understand. So we have a kind of structure of an idealized flower with all the major components that are seen here. Now these flowers form the fruits and then you have the fruits that we eat. Sometimes we eat the seeds. For example, corn plant, we eat the seeds. Again, there are numerous plants in which you have a kind of uh, uh, the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part on the same flower. Good example is the hibiscus that we have. Then you have okra, cotton, tomato, tobacco. All those are examples of this. Papaya plant is unique where you have a separate male flower, male plant, tree and a female tree. Similarly, there can be separate male flowers and female flowers on the same tree that could be seen. For example, maize and uh, oil palm. So there are various modifications that we see in our day to day life. The details on these we would understand as we move in our higher classes. So stay tuned for further updates. Do subscribe to the channel. We'll be bringing in more interesting lectures on science. Have a very good day ahead.